Welcome to Biology Exposed. Today, we'll be doing Adult Point 1.3, which requires to identify data sources, plan, choose equipment or resources, and perform a first-hand investigation to test the effect of increased temperature, change in pH, and change in the substrate concentration. This is part one of the part three series in this dot point. In this dot point, first off, we're going to be checking the what increased temperature does to enzymes. So to start off, here's our aim. To investigate the effect of variations in temperature on, enzy on the enzyme renin. Now, if you guys don't know already, what renin actually is, is I'll just quickly write this up for you. So, so renin is an enzyme which is found in mammalian stomachs. And it is basically responsible for the coagulation of milk. For coagulation of milk. Of milk. So in this case, what we're actually going to be do today, what, what we're actually going to do today, just to break it down for you, is we're going to put some renin, this thing, right? We're going to put some renin inside milk, and we're going to see at which temperature does it optimally work at. So now let's go down to our uh, investigation. So here we have the aim, and it is to investigate the effect of variations in temperature on enzyme renin, as I've said before. The hypothesis, temperatures ranging from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius will be optimal for the enzyme renin. Now, that was just my hypothesis. Now, it could be whatever you think you want, because hypotheses are basically just on your own opinion. Now, going on, we have the equipment. Now, in the equipment, we have 8 test tubes, 80 mils of milk, 4 junket tablets, and 4 beakers with water baths. Uh, just to add on here, we also have... Uh, so we have we also have eight test tubes. Oh wait, we already read that. My bad. Okay. So um what else is there? Okay, now let's go down to the method. Inside the method it is visible that uh I've just copied this in from my document. Now in the method Set up four groups of test tubes as described below in the table. The temperatures of these test tubes should be maintained at the designated temperatures by using water bath for each group. So as you can see, we have four groups, one at 0 degrees, one at 20 degrees, one at 38, and one at 80. Now, we have two test tubes in each of these groups. We have one with 10 ml milk and one with 10 ml milk with crushed, crushed junket tablet. Now, just to explain, just to get this uh, a little bit clear, Junket tablets basically have renin in them. So in junket tablets, they contain renin. And the reason why we're using it is because it is more convenient for us just to use uh, these tablets. So now what we do is, after we've prepared this, these four groups of uh, you know beakers with test tubes inside them, we put the water bath and we regulate the temperature at 0 degrees, so one at zero degrees, one at twenty degrees, one at thirty-eight degrees, and one at eighty degrees. Now, once we do this, we just uh, basically time how long it takes for the actual uh, milk to coagulate. Now, the reason why we actually have ten ml milk by its own is kind of as a control to see that without the renin, without the crushed junket tablet, how long would it actually take for it to, you know, coagulate? Now, by coagulate. I mean curdle. So, do you know when uh, milk gets all clumpy, uh, uh, like clumpy and uh, a little bit off? That's when it is curdled. Clumpy milk, and uh, a little bit off, just you know, you know, and off. So that's that's when it happens, you know. When co you know when coagulation happens, when you really just can't move the milk. It's not in a liquid state anymore. It's curdled. So it's curdled. Okay, now just to uh, finish this off, what we actually do here is that once we do this, once we put these water bays at uh, whatever the temperature is required, and we we do this out, we we re record how long it takes for the curdling to happen. So for each one, we record it. Now in my results, when I actually did this experiment, for all the ones without the renin in it, it was it did not even curdle for a long period of time, so I, we just left it. We knew that it was going to curdle, but um, obviously without renin, it would take a long time. So we left that alone. 
and as you can see in my results that reflects that we've just left it out we've said no nope, we've got nothing there we've got no curdling for a long period of time same with test tube A for each one because that's one with just milk now this is the actual trend in results you should identify the main trend is that at zero degrees Celsius the enzyme is not able to work that well and it takes it 20 plus minutes which is quite a long time for it to curdle considering we put an entire crushed junket tablet and at uh, uh, in group 2 at 20 degrees uh, it took 19 minutes and 26 seconds now to be honest that is also quite a long time considering we had the crushed junket tablet inside and obviously at group 3 38 degrees uh, it looks pretty obvious here that that is the optimal temperature for this enzyme renin to work in because if you can see at uh, group 3 test tube B we've got only 9.5 minutes now 9.5 minutes means that that was pretty goddamn quick considering all the other ones uh, pretty slow we got 20, 20 plus 19.26 10.38 but 9.5 it's the fastest one here so it's the fastest to coagulate meaning that the enzyme must be working at its best Enzymes working at its best. Okay, and uh, this was a bit off, but uh, our group four, 80 degrees, it was 10 minus 36. So obviously, the best best uh, temperature for this enzyme renin to work in for coagulating milk is at 38 degrees Celsius. That is what we have concluded using this experiment. So was our, was our hypothesis right? Let's have a look. So temperatures ranging from 20 to 40 degrees will be optimal for the enzyme renin. Well, partially correct. So basically, 38 degrees Celsius was the optimal temperature. Okay, so going down and completing this off, this is a nice graph that I just drew up in Microsoft Word. Um, on the side, we have relative enzyme activity, time taken to curdle. And on, the, on this side, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. As you can see, we've plotted it up, 0 degrees, 20 degrees, 38 degrees, and 80 degrees. So that's the group, group 1, group 2, group 3, and group 4. Now, our title is time taken for the milk to curdle corresponding to temperature. And uh, this is basically it. As you can see, the trend here is that as soon as it hits between the 20 degrees to 38 degrees, the lowest point, the lowest uh, time it takes for this uh, to actually coagulate is at 38 degrees. 38 degrees showing that, you know, that's the optimal temperature. And as you can see, you know, it, it, the trend is that at 38 degrees, it is the optimal temperature for it to work in. So let's have a look. Let's just have a little uh, little discussion here. Suppose uh, you're playing sport on a really hot day. Suppose you're playing touch football. Right? You're playing touch football. And it's very hot. It's something like 45 degrees Celsius. Hot Australian weather. And it's, it's peaking and you're still playing touch football. How do you think your performance would be? Would your performance be good? Do you think that you'd be, you know, fast, speedy, ready, energized? Well, to me, at 45 degrees, I would be pretty much uh, lazy, you know? I would be uh, dead, and I would be unwilling to do sport. Because, to be honest, uh, if you think about it, who wants to play sport at 45 degrees? It's too much of a task, it's too difficult, it's too hot, you sweat too much, it's not needed. Now, um, let's just uh, let's just uh, compare this. Now, suppose it was a nice day and it was something like 30 degrees, right? 30 degrees. It's it's decent summer, but we enjoy playing sport at that at that time. So enjoy playing sport because it's you know it's decent. The the sun's out. You know we're energized, uh, and we're energized, and we are willing to play sport. Uh, now let's compare this to enzymes. So if I just go down and show you a little thing. So comparison to enzymes. Not now, not now, not now. Go away. 
So if we compare this to enzymes, we just uh, have a look. So at 38 degrees Celsius, it loves playing in the sport. So it, it loves this temperature because it's optimal for the enzyme renin. However, if we put the temperature up to 80 degrees Celsius, it hates it. It can't even work well. It's bored, it's it's lazy, it can't it's it just it just can't work well. It's, you know, lazy, difficult to work in. And pretty much it's close to giving up. Now, if we put it at something like zero degrees, it's it's still too difficult. It hates it. Considering that enzymes were people, it hates it. So, just having a little overview of this, 38 degrees is the optimal temperature. It's it's pretty much in this case, 38 degrees for this enzyme is you know optimal temperature. So, concluding this up, the effect of temperature on enzymes, um, we just say, you know, the effect of temperature at 38 degrees, uh, the enzyme renin works best, and that is basically a conclusion for this test. Thank you for watching, and uh, comment, like, and subscribe.